Look, nails hanging from a rock. Paper clips picked up by a piece of rock. What's going on here? Well, you are seeing a natural occurring magnet called magnetite, or a lodestone, in action. These rocks have the ability to attract certain objects with an invisible force called magnetism. It is thought that possibly 2,000 years ago, some ancient Greeks discovered by accident the ability of certain rocks to attract some metals. Maybe a farmer had a metal tool or spearhead magically stick to a piece of magnetite. They discovered this unusual effect in a part of Turkey called magnesia, so the Greeks called the rock responsible for this attractive force magnetite. Today, we have permanent magnets that are used in hundreds of ways, from holding pictures on the refrigerator to producing electricity inside huge generators. It's fun to mess around with magnets. They come in all kinds of sizes, shapes, and strengths. Some magnets are round, some are bar-shaped, some are shaped like horseshoes, and some are donut-shaped. Magnets have two poles, a north and a south pole. Sometimes the magnet is colored to distinguish from north and south. These donut magnets are an excellent way to show how magnets attract and repel. When opposite sides of the magnets are facing each other, the magnets are attracted and come together. If the similar sides are facing each other, then the magnets repel or push away from each other. We can illustrate this with bar magnets as well. When the same sides are brought near, they push apart. However, when opposite sides are near, they attract or pull together. Magnets don't attract all objects. You can experiment with various objects to see what is attracted and what isn't attracted to a magnet. It might appear that objects made of metals are all attracted, but that isn't necessarily true. Only certain metals are attracted by magnets. These coins are made of metal, but are not attracted to the magnet. But this paper clip and these staples are definitely attracted to the magnet. You'll find that only metals made of nickel, iron, and cobalt are attracted by magnets. Magnetism can penetrate objects as demonstrated by this magnet moving the paper clip through the wood. If we put a bar magnet into a bowl of paper clips, we'll find that most of the clips attach to the ends of the magnet. The magnets are strongest at the ends. We can see the lines of force around a magnet by placing a piece of glass or thin cardboard on top of the magnet. Then we sprinkle iron filings onto the glass or cardboard, and the little bits of iron line up along the invisible lines of force that are found around the magnet. We can view the lines of force created when the ends of two different magnets are brought near each other. Remember that unlike ends of magnets attract each other, and like ends repel. Let's look at the lines of force when unlike sides of two magnets are brought near. Now, let's turn one magnet around so that like ends are facing each other. You can see the lines of force are repelling each other. If we tie a string to a bar magnet and let it hang, it will rotate around until one end is pointing north and the other end is pointing south. The end of the magnet that points north is called the magnet's north pole, and the opposite end is called the south pole. The magnet lines up this way because the Earth is a giant magnet. It is as if a giant bar magnet went through the center of the Earth, as shown in this picture. The magnet isn't really there. In fact, scientists believe that the magnetic effect is caused by very hot liquid metals in the outer core of the Earth, creating electrical charges that cause a magnetic field to develop. The invisible magnetic field extends out into space, protecting the Earth against solar particles released constantly by the sun. This stream of particles is called the solar wind. These charged particles make contact with the Earth's magnetic field lines and travel towards the poles. As the particles make contact with oxygen and nitrogen atoms in the atmosphere, a beautiful show of lights in the sky is displayed. These are referred to as auroras, or the northern and southern lights. The ancient Chinese were the first navigators to use magnets to help them sail the seas. 
They found they could use natural magnets held by string as a method for identifying north and south. These were the first compasses. Later it was discovered that a needle or thin piece of iron could be turned into a magnet by stroking the magnetite across it repeatedly. This needle, suspended on a piece of bamboo or cork and floating in water, would rotate around until one end pointed north. Sailors could then determine what direction they were sailing in by comparing this needle with the direction of the boat. 